Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, for those of you who have just logged on, we have already completed the sound check, so thank you to everyone who helped out with that. Um, just bear in mind, if you do need to increase the volume, you can increase the volume on your phone or your computer, depending on how you're listening in. Uh, today's webinar will be presented by Paul Byrne. Um, Paul is the Managing Director here at BrightPay. He is also a chartered accountant, having previously spent over 20 years running his own practice. Today, Paul is going to discuss how to help HMRC basic PAYE tools clients with auto-enrollment. This free webinar is designed to help payroll advisors build a better relationship with the clients while helping with their auto-enrollment duties. We will have a Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. Um, where we'll answer as many questions as possible. Um, if you do have any questions, please type them into the questions bar at the right of your screen on the control panel. Today's webinar will also be recorded and we will send uh, all the attendees an email with the link to the recording along with the presentation slides and a number of useful links. Um, so I'll now pass you over to Paul um, to start off today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us today. Uh, just a small bit about myself before we start off. Now it's working here. Okay, um, my background is as a practicing accountant and I started my own practice way back in the 80s. Eventually grew into a three partner practice with 10 staff. While in practice I provided payroll bureau services for about 30 clients so I have some idea of what it was like in the front line. In 1992, I got into payroll software development. A large part of my reasoning for this was to make better software than what I was using at the time. Eventually, I began working in software development full-time. About four years ago, we introduced Bright Pay and Bright Contracts in both the UK and Ireland. Today, over 100,000 employers across the UK and Ireland use our products, a figure that we hope to improve on every year. So here's the agenda for my slot today, which I hope you will find useful. When talking, I will often refer to auto enrollment or automatic enrollment simply as AE and HMRC basic PUI tools as BPT. So we'll start off by outlining the employer duties required for AE compliance. Workplace pensions reform in the UK means that every employer must automatically enrol workers into a pension scheme. This is called auto automatic enrolment. Auto enrolment is automatic for the employees, but not for the employers. There are now a number of duties that employers need to undertake to comply with auto enrolment. Even if there are no, no eligible job holders, certain steps need to be followed. Okay, to summarize the legal duties of auto enrollment, employers must complete the following duties. They must automatically enroll all eligible job holders into an auto enrollment scheme, that is, those who are above the earnings threshold and between 22 and state pension age. They must communicate to all workers, providing timely and appropriate information. They must allow non eligible job holders to opt in and entitled workers to join a pension scheme. They must manage opt-outs within the opt-out period and promptly refund contributions. They must complete the declaration of compliance with the regulator to give details such as the number of eligible job holders enrolled. Uh, they need to automatically re-enroll and notify eligible job holders who opted out of, out of a scheme and did not join another scheme every three years and complete a redeclaration of compliance. And they must keep records of what they have done to comply with auto enrollment. Mm -hmm and maintain, and probably most importantly, maintain payment of employee and employer contributions to the pension scheme. So that's like a, 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 an outline of the duties for auto enrollment. It is, it is important to remember that these duties are ongoing and do not cease once the initial staging process has taken place. Ultimately, the responsibility for complying with auto enrollment rests with the employer. If an employer fails to comply, the pensions regulator will take action. Research by the pensions regulator shows that most employers want to do the right thing by their staff when it comes to auto enrollment. However, small employers are more likely to leave things to the last minute. As a result, there has been an increase in the number of compliance notices issued in recent months. 
It is expected that 78% of employers will turn to their accountant, bookkeeper or payroll bureau for AE advice and counsel. The Pensions Regulator is urging payroll advisors and bureaus to help their clients get ready for their AE journey. One of the most at-risk groups for non-compliance with auto-enrollment is BPT users. These users are left at a disadvantage as BPT does not cater for auto-enrollment. It is not a legal requirement to use software to process auto-enrollment. However, manually processing auto-enrollment could end up being very time-consuming and costly. The Pensions Regulator actively encourages employers to use payroll software that can assist users with AE tasks. Assessing the workforce and calculating contributions manually will lead to an additional workload. Manual data entry also introduces the possibility of human error. We all know that error occurs frequently when it comes to dealing with numbers and manually entering data into a computer. Anyone who lacks concentration or a knowledge of AE rules and regulations may have an additional risk of errors. Errors can also consume additional time and staff resources to identify and correct. With such important information to enter, users will make mistakes that can have consequences. The reality is that although using a manual system may seem like you are saving, it does represent a false economy for your business. 1.8 million uh, small and micro employers, although I think the latest on that is 1.6 million, are due to reach their staging date within the next three years, and many of these are BPT users. The Pensions Regulator has released a basic AE toolkit to help these users with processing auto-enrollment. The auto-enrollment toolkit is in the form of a downloadable Excel spreadsheet where the employer would input employee information, including name, date of birth, qualifying earnings for the pay reference period, and if the employee has previously opted in or out. The tool will then indicate who needs to be automatically enrolled into a pension scheme and provide employer and employee contribution values. As the toolkit is provided by the pensions regulator, many BPT users may assume that it will be the most appropriate solution to use for auto enrollment. However, there are many limitations to the software which reduces the scope of the tool. As mentioned previously, after manual data entry, the tool would indicate who needs to be automatically enrolled and the contribution values, but there are many of the mandatory AE duties not catered for. So here are the, some, some of the limitations of the, the toolkit. Uh, it will not support multiple pay frequencies. So if you have somebody being paid mon monthly and other employees being paid weekly, you'll need to set up additional versions of the tool. It doesn't support variable contribution levels. The tool will use a tax-based pay reference period only. The tool will assume that the legal minimum deduction and contribution entitlements are being used. The tool will calculate contributions based on banded qualifying earnings, earnings only, so if a user has an alternative contribution arrangement, the tool will not be suitable for them. The tool will only calculate uh, contributions for entitled workers who request to join a pension scheme, should they be placed, sorry, I'll, I'll go through that again. Uh, entitled workers, um, it'll, it'll only uh, do the calculations for entitled workers on the same basis as other employees. Uh, one of the things that, you, that an employer doesn't have to do with entitled workers is contribute to the pension scheme. So again, if you're handing entitled workers through the AE toolkit, uh, you, you will have to do employer contributions as well. Um, the tool will not be able to handle postponement. In addition, it will not have the ability to support the re-enrollment process. The tool does not have any communications built into it. Again, you, you have to download uh, the actual recommended communications templates from the Pension Regulator's website, which is, is a fairly manual task. Um, also, in relation to pension file submissions, it will not produce enrollment or contribution files to send to the pension providers. Um, as opposed to the next thing, the pay slips, you cannot produce pay slips showing the pension contributions, which is actually one of the legal requirements. Uh, this is actually one of the limitations of, of BPT itself. Um, number of employees, this is academic, the tool will only support up to 15 workers, whereas BPT handles up to 10. There are some workarounds that you can do to get around some of the limitations. For example, you can create two versions of the tool for different pay frequencies. 
However, this is just adding to the already cumbersome and time-consuming AE task for each pay period. The question remains whether this tool will only add to current worries and stresses about all enrollment, or would it actually help HMRC users? While HMRC users want an, an easy-to-use and innovative solution, this AE tool is far from seamless and requires a lot of manual effort. As mentioned previously, manual data entry will lead to increased risk of error and non-compliance. The impact of auto enrollment will affect your clients' businesses now and for the foreseeable future. The pensions regulator will enforce penalties if the employer chooses to ignore their auto enrollment duties. The enforcement action starts with statutory notices being issued to the employer. This is then followed by penalty notices and further non-compliance may lead to court action. The pensions regulator wants to work with employers to make sure they understand their employer duties. In certain circumstances, they will work with the employer to ensure compliance, for example, where the employer genuinely did not understand their duties or due to unforeseen circumstances that have not been able to comply. However, those who do not, do not carry out the AE duties in accordance with the law will face enforcement action and penalties. Um, there is a, a whole array of uh, fines and actions that the pensions regulator can carry out. And I actually won't go through all of them with you at this stage because I think you just lose the will to live. Um, but suffice to say that you know, it, 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 auto enrollment should actually be quite easy uh, to comply with. So there's, there's kind of no excuse really for not, not, not complying as such. And there are the tools out there. But as I say, I won't go through all the fines and penalties. We'll probably include them in the handout or, or, or a follow-up email. In relation to some statistics, as at the end of uh, March 2016, the pensions regulator has used its powers over 10,000 times. This includes a total of 7,834 compliance notices and 2,234 fixed penalty notices. Okay, so the question remains, what is the best way to help clients using BPT with auto enrollment? The big decision facing accountants and other bureau providers with regard to clients who use BBT would be, do you offer to handle their payroll for them, or do you advise them how to, how to best continue to process their own payroll? Regardless of whether or not you will be doing the payroll for the client, it is important to find out their staging date and communicate with them. Research with the pensions regulator shows that of employer staging between August and November this year, only 65% of them were aware of auto enrollment, with just 56% knowing their staging date. Many would leave the preparations to the last minute. Do not assume that clients will come to you prior to your staging date. Advisors will find that a large proportion of their clients will contact them very close to or even after their staging date. It is important to engage with these small and micro employers who have not yet staged to help reduce the number of latecomers. Trying to backdate auto enrollment can be a nightmare and may result in fines and penalties. You can find out your client's staging date by looking it up on the Pensions Regulator website or by using ByPay's staging date integration tool, which is basically built into the software. It would also be useful to give the client an assessment preview of what auto enrollment might look, at, might look like at staging. BrightPay has a pre-assessment tool which will give you a breakdown of each employee's worker category along with their pensionable earnings, their qualifying earnings and pay period, and the employee and employer contribution amounts. This is a useful document to send to clients in advance of their staging date so that they can understand how much auto enrollment might cost them and allow them to plan accordingly. It is important to determine whether or not you wish to offer payroll services to these clients or merely offer advice on how they should proceed. Not all clients using BPT present a business opportunity for you. These employers will typically be very cost conscious and, and may present too much of a challenge for accountants attempting to achieve commercially viable fees. You can still see them right by giving them correct and timely advice and this will stand to you in the long run. It is important that you outline exactly what is involved in auto enrollment and then let them choose how much work and responsibility they want to take on. Make sure that they know exactly what they are getting into. 
communicate how difficult it will be to process all auto enrollment with basic PAY tools. <clears throat> auto enrollment does not have to be a burden for these small employers. Fortunately, BPT users are not limited to using this tool. Let them know that there are a number of free or low cost options that will be immeasurably better than using BPT. BPT users who have decided to use payroll software have saved considerable time and effort. Automation has allowed these adopters to simply enter their staging date and the software automates the AE process from staging to pension file submission. And now I suppose the plug was inevitable. BrightPay is a payroll software solution that will allow your non-payroll clients to process payroll and auto enrollment in-house. With BrightPay, users do not need an in-depth knowledge of AE. The software will automate many employer duties for you and alert you when an action needs to be performed. BrightPay has a BPT import facility, which will allow users to import employer details into BrightPay in less than one minute. BrightPay is free for microemployers with three or less employees, and this includes auto enrollment functionality and free support. For clients with more than three employees, BrightPay standard license is just £89 plus VAT uh, per, per annum, per tax year. We are also offering webinar attendees a 10% discount that you can pass on to non-payroll clients who currently use BPT. This will enable clients to get a standard license for just £80, 10 pence plus VAT. By recommending BrightPay, you can build a better relationship with the clients while helping with their auto enrollment duties. Should your client need help with their payroll or, or auto enrollment process, they can simply contact BrightPay's free phone and email support. If, on the other hand, you are offering auto enrollment services to these clients, it is important to let them know what services you are willing to offer and your fees for doing so. For more information about auto enrollment fees, you can download our guide, our guide, How to Increase Charges for AE Without Losing Clients. This guide outlines three simple but effective pricing plans that allow bureaus to offer AE as a chargeable and profitable service. We'll include a link to this in our follow-up email. Whether your client processes auto enrollment in-house or outsources the service to you, it is important to have the correct software tools in place. Pensions Regulator encourages employers and bureaus to use payroll software that can cater for uh, and automate um, auto enrollment duties. An integrated system such as BrightPay will simplify and streamline auto enrollment, allowing users to reduce the workload and administrative burden on the business significantly. If you are processing auto enrollment for a number of clients, make sure that your chosen software has no limitation to the number of employers and employees. Some software providers uh, charge users per employer or per employee. Pension scheme integration is another feature to look for which will offer further time-saving advantages. It would be advisable to check that your current payroll system is compatible with your chosen pension scheme. BrightPay is compatible with 16 different pension providers, including API integration with both Nest and Smart Pensions. API integration uh, basically means that it works very much like RTI. So the best way uh, to demonstrate how BrightPay can help you with offering auto enrollment as a service is by showing you how the software should work. So I'd now like to hand you over to Vicky, who's our UK support manager, for a quick demo showing you just how easy auto enrollment can be with BrightPay. In this example, we are assuming that the employer, or you on their behalf, has already registered with a pension scheme, and in this, in this case, the pension scheme being Nest. So thank you, Vicky. Thanks, Paul. So good morning, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so as Paul's just mentioned there, I'll just show you um, a demonstration of how BrightPay works. Um, I'll start, first of all, with just bear with me there, um, just to show you, first of all, just how the HMRC basic tools import works. As Paul just mentioned, it can be, be, can be performed in less than one minute. It's very quick and seamless for you. So here on screen, you'll see that we have our starting screen for the BrightPay software. And all you would need to do is click on Import Employer at the bottom, select the option to import from HMRC Basic PAYE Tools, and you'll be presented with two options. So if you were performing the import um, from the, at the start of the year, so if you're 
just want to run across your employee details from basic tools, select this option here to start at the beginning of, this, of the tax year in question. Alternative, oh, sorry, alternatively, and this would apply really now, now that we're kind of, um, you know, um, in process of the, the tax year, you can then select to continue um, in the, 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 the tax year. So that basically means you can bring across both your employee and mid-year pay information from the basic tools software there. So if we just choose an option here, then you'll be presented with um, this screen here. So based on what both options will, will bring you through to this. And this, this We'll, this screen will then bring you through to the basic POA tools database um, and all you need to do is select the SQLite 3 file, click on open and your import is successful. If you have more than one company in HMRC basic tools, you will present it with a listing here and you will just select which ones, um, which companies you want to bring across into Brightpay. This is an example of just um, one employer, so where you only have one employer in your basic tools. Um, so it's nice and quick that import for you and it will add your company to the listing there. So here we have the payroll screen and um, this is for month ending the 31st of May. So we're going to assume in this example that the employer's staging date is the 1st of May and we are not going to use postponement in this example. So if we select an employee here, you'll see here that you have these on-screen flags appear. And if I just click on any employee here, what BrightPay will do is automatically assess your employees for you when you reach your staging date. So it will determine whether employees are eligible job holders, non-eligible job holders, or entitled workers for you. On screen here, we have an employee. She is being assessed as an eligible job holder. And if we click on View Options, this will then bring you through to the um, actions available for this worker category. So we can either enroll the employee, postpone, or mark as exempt if that um, was applicable. So to enroll an employee into an AE pension scheme, simply click the Enroll button, select the correct enrollment date, then select your pension scheme from the listing. That would already have been set up by yourself in the pensions utility before staging. Select your pension scheme, then the applicable tax relief um, that is in operation with the pension provider that you have gone with. A useful feature in BrightPay um, is the ability to batch process employees. So if you have more than one employee that you wish to enroll into the same pension scheme with the same tax relief, then simply select the option to enroll multiple employees with these settings. This will then give you the option to select the employees that you, all, that you wish to enroll all at the same time, so select their names, click on Enroll Selected Employees, and that will complete their enrollment all at the same time. Once you've enrolled employees, um, you are obliged to then communicate with the employee and provide them with an enrollment letter. And BrightPay will automatically prepare these enrollment letters for you. So here, simply click on the option Letter. Again, if you wish to batch process these letters, so if you have enrolled more than one employee, then you can batch print, um, export a PDF, or email to, to, the, um, to the individual employees here. If I just click on print here. So if you are printing or exporting your enrollment letters, the user does have um, the ability here just to add a signature to the letter and also has control over paper size, for example, and paper orientation. And if I just do a print preview here on screen for you. So right here, um, we covered the, basically we have used the pension regulators um, April 2015 standard templates here. So the content is in line with the TPR. Um, and the enrollment letter is going to contain information, for example, um, for the employer about their staging date, what their contribution rates are, and how they can opt out should they choose to do so. And also just some general information about automatic enrollment and what it will mean for them there. Once your employee or employees are in, are in receipt of their enrollment letter, then you can tell BrightPay that this um, action has been done. So simply click on Mark as done. And again, to speed things up, you can do it for multiple employees. Once you have enrolled employees, if you then return to their pay slip view, as you can see on the screen, you'll then see those deductions now carry through onto the employee's pay slip and will remain there 
until such time, for example, that the employee opts out if they choose to do so, or um, and their enrollment ceases. Our next employee is an example of a non-eligible job holder. So Brightpay is assessing this employee as non-eligible. And again, if we click on view options, that brings us through to the options to, to write to the, the employee um, and just inviting them that they have the right to opt in should they choose to do so. Then if they do wish to opt in, you have the opt in option here, then to postpone and to mark as exempt. Okay, so we just choose letter here. Again, you have the option to print, export to PDF or email the individual, or again, do it in a batch print or email, for example, here. And again, to mark as done either for the individual or for multiple employees all at the same time. So once employees have been enrolled or have joined or have opted in, when you finalize their pay periods going forward, their pay slip will also reflect those pension contributions as well. Here you can see here these on screen. BrightPay currently supports 16 pension providers and they are just here on screen for you so you can see the listing here. Where we offer dedicated support, that means that BrightPay can actually produce the relevant files for upload into the pension provider in question and into their web portals. Um, of the 16, two of them, that is Nest and Smart Pension, they have an API option, which means that you can submit your files that are needed directly from BrightPay into those pension providers. So it's similar to an RTI submission in that they will go directly from the software into the into the pension providers portal there so just in our example we're using nest so if i just click on nest here so nest as i've just mentioned is a, um, one of the pension providers that offer an api um service so when you when you select nest so once you finalized your pay period um nest actually require an enrollment file first of all just to inform Nest of, the, the, of their new members basically just to let them know who you are enrolling and then they also require a contributions file um, to report contributions made from employees and also the employer's contribution um, to report that every pay period thereon after staging. So if we are to do an enrollment file first of all for submission to Nest, um, so first of all just make sure that you've chosen your submission method as the Nest web service and that you've entered your login details. Username and password here would be what you use to log into your Nest account. Okay. So as just mentioned, they do require an enrollment submission first of all to let them know who you uh, you know who they are have to enroll at their site. So to submit that enrollment submission, simply click on send enrollment submission here. At step one, select the employees that you wish to include. On the next screen, you just need to enter some additional employee information. So for example, the payment source and what their enrollment type is and or whether they're an overseas national still awaiting a, a national insurance number. Then at step three, all you do is click send now and submit that to Nest. Okay. What will happen then at the top right of your screen is that you will get a response back from Nest to let you know that they've successfully received your file. Um, do let that, you know, give it about 20 minutes to come back. It won't be an instant response. So, you know, unlike an RTI submission. So do allow a little bit of time there just to get a response back in. For Nest, Nest actually informed us as well, if you have um, over 50 employees in a submission, it can take over two hours to get a response back. So, you know, don't feel you have to be watching the screen waiting for that response to come back in. Okay. So once your enrollment file has been submitted and you finalized your pay periods, BrightPay will then produce your contributions file for submission to Nest as well. So again, just using the API option, you're going to click on send submission here within contribution summary. Um, at the first step, just complete your payment information. So when you're sending the submission for what your payment source is and what your payment due date is. At step two, um, include the employees um, for the submission. At step three, you just need to select for any employees any reason for partial or non-payment of contributions. 
I suppose the best example there is if you've if somebody's been P45 and that member has now left your employment, you could select that reason there and let Ness know no, to no longer expect contributions. And at step four, again, just like the enrollment submission, you're just going to click send now to submit your contribution submission to Nest. Okay. The other pension providers that we offer dedicated support for work very much the same way. This is an API submission, but the only difference here um, for the other pension providers um, is that this would create a CSV file instead. So that would be a two-step process so that you would um, save your CSV file and then upload it into your pension provider's um, web portal here. So instead of having the send now button here, this would be create CSV file and it would then give you an option to save that file. <clears throat> I think just the other thing I wanted to say there as well, Vicky, about that, uh, the, the, the contribution file going in. When people set up the, uh, the scheme with Nest, they would have set up a direct debit. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean what we would think it mm -hmm. should mean, which means, you know, we would think that means that once you send in the details that Nest have the information and they know how much you debit your account every month, uh, you know, on an ongoing basis. Nest actually don't automatically take that direct debit. You have to actually go in and approve it uh, every month. Now that's it's an additional API that we're looking at including in the software to basically instruct Nest that it is approved without having to then log into the portal. So mm -hmm. that's just the point you yeah. make on that. It's yeah. unfortunately all all of this stuff is evolving. You know, it's, it's uh, hopefully it'll all be in place over the next few months and time for the, the main tsunami which hits next year. <laughs> it is indeed, yeah. it is indeed, yeah. And just to show you then finally just on the BrightPay Bright Pay demo, um, we do have an assessment report in the software and that can be found um, within the pensions utility and just by clicking the assessment report button on the menu bar. This will allow you to do a pre-assessment and also a post-assessment um, of your employees, so pre-staging and post-staging basically. So on screen we have a pre-staging assessment. This is useful for sending on to clients maybe a few weeks or a couple of, you know, a few months before their staging date um, um, comes around. Um, this is going to just give you a, a prediction really, a kind of an estimation of how employees are going to be assessed and what their likely contributions are going to be and also what employer contributions are likely to be as well. The same um, document also includes just a general assessment guide. So again, it's quite a useful document to send over to clients. Um, so it just gives um, some more information about the three categories of worker assessment and what qualifying earnings are, for example, there. Just on screen then is just an example of the post-assessment. So if you access the, the assessment report after staging, it's, it's going to give you an overview of, of what happened at staging for you. Um, so here is the example on screen. This is going to be probably something that you can use just to complete your declaration of compliance um, within the five months after staging there. Just on that point as well, Vicky, the, uh, the pensions regulator is actually considering uh, developing an API to handle declaration of compliance. Now, once they have that, we will include that in our software, so it, it'll make it a lot more user friendly. Because at the moment, the declaration of compliance is is something that you need to log into the pension regulator web regulator website and actually complete there. So, you know, hopefully we'll have mm -hmm. that uh, in the next few months. Okay, so that completes that there for you. Um, so I'll just pass you back to Paul. Okay, thank you, Vicky. Um, just before we go to the questions and answers, uh, just a few things that, you know, sort of so, from the front line, so to speak, you know, a few bits, a few bits of uh, advice I'd just like to give you. Um, one is, look, engage with the client well, well in advance of the staging date. You can use the Pension Spectre website to find out the staging dates or use the tool within RightPay. Don't let a client forget about staging. The consequences are costly and extremely inconvenient. For example, if they're three months late, uh, the client will have to pay the employee contributions as well as the employer contributions and will probably have some fines on top of that as well. So that's number one. Just don't let the client forget about staging. 
Number two, if you are postponing any employees, make sure to communicate within six weeks of, of the staging date. Apparently, some employers believe that if they choose to postpone all employees for three months of their staging date, then nothing needs to be done in that three-month period. This is not the case, as all employees must receive communications within six weeks of the staging date relating to the, to the, the, sorry, relating to the postponement and explaining when they will be reassessed. If this communication is not issued, then the postponement effectively never happened, and enrollment must be completed retrospectively back to the staging date. Thirdly, agree who is to do the declaration of compliance. If you are not offering this as a service, make it perfectly clear. Don't allow your client to forget to complete the declaration of compliance and receive a fine. This is an area where the pensions regulator has issued the largest number of fines to date. That penalty is £400 for something that should take just 10, to 10 or 15 minutes. And lastly, I suppose, which is basically the subject of this, this webinar today, avoid using PPT. We cannot stress this point enough, as discussed throughout today's webinar. There are many limitations to the tool, leaving it open to error and non-compliance. Okay, so I think we're ready for questions and answers. Um, yeah, we have a, a, a few questions in here. Just bear with me a second. Okay. Um, so just a question that's coming in. Is it hard to switch from HMRC tools to BrightPay? So, yeah, I probably just showed you that there just in the demo there. It's very, very quick and seamless. Um, so, yeah, you have the import option at the bottom of the starting screen so when you double click into BrightPay you have the import employer option and um, BrightPay actually automatically does its best to locate your HMRC basic tools database folder and um, so in really 99% of occasions it will find the you know where you need to be and it's just really selecting the SQ light file then and that will do the import straight away for you and again that one SQ light file will contain might, might contain many employers and again, the, 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 the import tool will bring in all those employers. It'll, it'll let you decide which ones you want to leave out if, if appropriate. Okay. And just another question in there. Do you have a pre-auto enrollment letter that we can send out to employees to tell them that auto enrollment is coming? But we, we don't actually have uh, that within the software. But I know the pensions regulator has on their site many uh, sort of resources that uh, you can include, I, I think one of the things, for example, is a poster, say, that you include in the canteen, uh, telling them about auto enrollment and, you know, what it means for them. But no, no, we don't actually have something like that within the software itself. Okay. Um, with regards to Nest, as a third-party payroll provider, will we have to um, have third-party access to Nest in order to submit the initial um, enrollment files and then the subsequent contribution files. Okay, should I answer that one, Paul? Yes, yeah, <laughs> no problem. Um, I suppose there's two options available to you where you are a third party provider. First of all, um, what can happen is that the employer can set up their Nest account and then give you delegate access. Um, so they can set you up as a delegate, first of all. With, when they are setting you, sorry, setting you up as a delegate, there are different levels of delegates. So they need to ensure that they set you up as a full access delegate, delegate and that means then that you can submit files, etc., on their behalf. Another option is probably the most common option is that Nest do something called Nest Connect, and that is is purely designed for third party agents, really, and payroll bureaus who are providing AE services. So it allows you to, it's really kind of like a bureau account, isn't it? I think that's yes. the best way yeah. to describe it. Um, and that means that you can um, manage and submit files all through Nest Connect and have a, you know, a good number of employers on that within this, within the one login really for you. So that may be the route to go down. It's, it's called Nest Connect. Okay. Um, just a question now, what is API? Okay, that's a uh, application programming interface. Basically, what, what that means is that uh, the systems, the computer systems, can talk to each other. Uh, so effectively, like we use the example of RTI, um, you know, your software is, is preparing the PUI and NIC details for, and, and, and various employees' pay details for submission to HMRC. Um, the computer, or sorry, our software, prepares the file 
basically dials up, like using old speak, it kind of dials up the HMRC computer and shakes hands and says, hey, we're here, we're here's our authentication, and gives the, uh, throws the information across to HMRC system and, and receives a response back saying, yes, we received that, thank you very much. Yeah, and effectively, that's that's what happens here. Usually at, at, at the click of a button, you know, the, all that sort of information happens under the hood. Um, so that's an API say is effectively the same sort of workings as RTI. Okay, um, just another question in there. During maternity leave, does the software ensure employers' contributions are based on the employee's normal pay um, and therefore included in all payments to the pension provider? Okay. You want to yeah, that? yeah. <laughs> yeah that, I know that. I know that one has come up. Before. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, at the moment it's not automated. Yeah. Yeah. It would need a manual adjustment to the pension. Yes. Yeah. Um, sorry, the, the percentage or the if it's a fixed amount, you know, just to the fixed amount. Yeah. I think you can include a pay item, can you? That, that is, you can include a pay item that's just a pensionable, or that also yeah. be um, taken into account for tax. Yeah, it might take. Yeah, yeah okay, I'd have right. to just double check yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but at the moment it's very much a manual yeah, okay. adjustment that has to be done. Um, just another comment in there. I do not have the opt out option showing. Okay, this could be one of two things. Maybe it could be that the opt out period has now ended. So, um, with most pension providers, they have a calendar month from active membership to opt out. Yeah, it's. Um... Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember what the opt-out window is exactly. Uh, it's from it's from when they become enrolled, uh, when they, they achieve effective membership of the pension scheme, or when they get the letter. Uh, I think it's whichever Which is the later. Which is the uh, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's six weeks. Yeah, I think six maximum weeks then, six yeah. weeks. And yeah. I know our software will kind of, you know, if it's maybe more than two months beyond that date, uh, opt out won't be an option then at that stage. Mm -hmm. Basically, you have to sort of uh, cease membership, uh, which doesn't automatically refund contributions. It would be up to the employee themselves to take it up with Nest or whoever the pension provider is if they ceased uh, their membership at that stage. And session also, it, it also it could be that it's an entitled worker that's exercised their right to join. So because they haven't opted in or been automatically enrolled, they don't have an opt-out option. So if they're an entitled yes, worker, okay. that could be a reason why you're not seeing an opt-out button yeah. as well. Okay. Um, is Nest free of charge? Well, I, I, well, I believe they're, they're free to the employer, um, but there are costs uh, to the employee. Now, I don't know exactly how it compares with other, other pension schemes in terms of, you know, the actual cost, the administration fees, whatever they charge employees. But I think all these things are kind of legislated for and that they can't actually go over a certain percentage. So, um, but anyway, I suppose the question there is, you know, is it free to the employer? I think that's, a, that's the question, mm -hmm. in which case it is. Okay. Um, how do I avail of the discount to pass on to clients at a 10% discount there? Um, I think the webinar team will follow up with an email just after the webinar today, um, and then I I'm just get a nod here from my colleague, yeah. Ethan, then it'll be if you want to just call us and just quote the webinar that you attended, and we'll be able to apply that 10% discount for you. Okay. Um, just another question that's just come in now. All our clients would opt out of the scheme. What is the best way to act? Okay. Um, unfortunately, even though you might know that in advance, you still have to enroll your, your employees and communicate with them and let them know that they have the option to opt out. Um, so I, I think in the majority of cases where, where this applies, you, you would enroll the employees, uh, pay them and show them their pay slip, the deduction of the, uh, of the pension contribution, etc. Then in the next pay period, opt them out and they get a refund of the contribution. But you'd have to receive, you know, official notification from them or their pension scheme that they have opted out. We also just um, posted a blog there on June the 13th. If you want to go to brightpay.co.uk, we just have kind of a kind of comprehensive blog there about what happens if all your employees want to opt out. So oh, it's worth good. a read as well. Yeah. Um, if we switch to Brightpay, do you offer training and support? And how much does this cost? Okay. Um, 
yes and yes <laughs> to training and support. Um, yes, with every license um, purchased from us, then you do get free telephone support. It's just the cost of your phone call to us then. Um, so you can call our support line. We also have email support as well. And you can email support at brightpay.co.uk if you have any support queries. Um, in terms of training, we have all our online documentation. While you're in the software, if you press F1 on your keyboard, that brings you into our online help documentation. We also have, I think, about 60 or 70 video tutorials as well on the website. So yeah. a few options there for you. And from time to time, we also run these webinars uh, for for employers and for bureaus, which are like training webinars, they're not all kind of marketing. <laughs> so yeah, you know. Exactly, exactly. I think that's all the questions there. Um, just let me just check there. Do we have any more? Okay. Um, is this question? Yeah, is just the, one I, last I, I, one I here. The question is: I don't understand clearly the implications of pay periods and tax periods. Our pay periods are the first of the thirty-first each calendar month pay paid on the last day of the month. As this does not match with the tax period in the sixth and fifth month, are there any issues that should be aware of regarding calculation and payment of pension contributions? Okay, um, well, we cater for the, uh, the calendar month basis. So in that particular situation where somebody, you know, is doing a calendar month and paying within that calendar month, that's very straightforward within mm -hmm. Brighton Pay. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no need to be concerned about the tax month issue at that stage, you know, for that particular case. Um, where the tax month would apply is if, if the payment was being made after the, the actual calendar month, but, but before or including the fifth of, of the following month, which I believe is, is the case in some, with some employers mm -hmm. or some accountants operate that way. In that case, you need to set up within right pay that, you know, you are actually you set up your pay date and you set up what the period it relates to, and right pay will look after that automatically anyway, in which case you will effectively be running on a tax month basis at that stage. Uh, it's very, unfortunately, this, this whole area of, of pay periods is extremely complicated, very hard to get your head around. And I, I'm not just talking about for a normal employer or accountant, even people that are involved in the whole pension industry, uh, you know, have difficulty with this concept. Um, but look, in that particular case, with, for that question, uh, right pay does handle it calendar month basis, not an issue. Okay. Um, and just finally, how do, how, um, how do I go and look for this recorded webinar? Again, I think it'll be emailed on. Yeah, we'll send out the email either this evening or first thing tomorrow, and it'll include useful links and the link to the recording of the webinar. Great. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. That's okay. all the questions there. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, thank you, folks. And uh, thank you, Vicky. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks now. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye.